Welcome to Electra Online. Here's a good example where if you weren't careful about the strategy of how to solve it and you just do brute force uh, solution, you may not be able to get this done in time. Matter of fact, you will not get this done on time. So let me show you why. First of all, let's read the problem. It says a point charge of 12 microcoulombs is at a distance of 6 centimeters vertically above the center of a square of side 12 centimeters as shown in the figure. So at least we're nice enough to give us a little figure to look at. The magnitude of the electric flux through the square will be times 10 to the third Newton meter squared per coulomb. So the first reaction you might have is, well, you have a point charge, you calculate the electric field, then you calculate how much of the electric field goes to the square, and then you take that electric field divided by the area and you get the flux. But that would be a very difficult way to do it. Instead, we can use Gauss's law by doing the following. We can take a cube like this, where the sides are all 12 centimeters, and then we place the cube directly in the middle of it so that it's six centimeters from any one of the six sides. And then using Gauss's law, we can say that the electric flux that goes through the entire cube is going to be equal to the charge Q divided by epsilon sub naught. And now it makes it a lot easier to find the electric flux. Now notice that is over six sides, you'll have to divide it by six because you want it only for a single side. So for a single side, we also have to divide this by six. So we need to put a six in the denominator as well, like that. Now notice that if you don't remember the value for this constant, you may not be able to solve. Well, you will not be able to solve the problem. So it also shows that you have to memorize the values of many of these constants, otherwise you can't do some of the problems. All right, so the Q is given, so that's equal to 12 microcoulombs, that's 12 times 10 to the minus six in the numerator. We divide it by six, and then epsilon sub naught, that's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, like this. We can simplify things a little bit. So this becomes one, this becomes two. And then we have 10 to the minus six and 10 to the minus 12. So that can be written as two divided by 8.85 times 10 to the positive six. Notice they're going to have it in terms of times 10 to the third, but we'll get there in just a moment. So maybe we can write this as 2000 divided by 8.85 times 10 to the third. Okay, now we have it in the correct format, and now all we have to do is evaluate this. And we don't have a calculator, so what we have to do is longhand division. So we take 2,000, and we divide it by 8.85. 8.85. But then we don't want the decimal there, so we multiply this by 100. We add a couple of zeros. Now we divide 885 into 2000. So first take 2000 here. So 2 times that, that gives us uh, 0, 01, that's 71, that's 17. And subtract with 0, we get 10 divided by 3 is 3. 2, add another 0. Uh, looks like another 2 times 2 times that, that gives us another 1770. And subtract, we had 0, that gives us 3, 2, that gives us uh, 5, 530. And, hmm, 885 goes into that 5, 5 times, maybe 6 times. Let's try 6. 6 times that, that would be 0, 3. Uh, 48, that's 1, 5. 6 times 8 is 48 of 53, and wow, really close. So the remainder is approximately zero, close enough. And so that means that 226 is what goes in here. So this is equal to 226 times 10 to the third. And notice the answer then would be 226. Wow, that's kind of an odd number. Normally the answers are in much uh, smaller or much simpler formats. When you say 226, you sit there and go, did I do something right? Did I do something wrong? I'm not quite sure if that's the correct answer, but it turns out that was the correct answer. It is fairly simplistic, but you can easily make a, an error in the arithmetic calculations, so you gotta be careful there. 
But that's how it's done. And again, notice how simple the problem became. Otherwise, we'd have to take the charge and then integrate it over the area. That would just be a really messy integral. It would take you a long time to do. It's a lot easier to use Gauss's law. And the concept that the flux is equal to Q over epsilon sub naught. And that is how it's done.